live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and died again, that he might be Lord. Jesus and immortality to light through the gospel and the last I am he who lives and lives, and behold I am alive forevermore and I have the keys of death and of hell because I live you will live also and death shall be no more, neither shall there be crying nor pain no more, for the first things are passed away. I invite you to please join in the singing of the opening hymn, Precious Memories.
you this morning, O oh God. And God, we bow our heads in your presence. It is you, Almighty God, who has created us. It is you, O oh God, who is in control of everything that is happening on this earth. It is to you, O oh God, that we lift our voices in praise this day. Because indeed, O oh God, even as we attend this service of Thanksgiving, we are here, O oh God, not as persons who are grieving without hope, but we are here today, O oh God, paying a tribute to one who we knew and we loved. Paying a tribute, O oh God, to one whom we know you were there for since the time that she was conceived in her mother's womb. We are here today, O oh God, giving you thanks and giving you praise for the gift of her life. And so, dear God, even as we have gathered here this day, we pray, O oh God, that indeed, even as we reflect, that once more, O oh God, we will be confronted with our own mortality. That once more, Almighty God, even this occasion will cause us to reflect, Lord, on how we are living our own lives and where we may be erring or straying from your real God. I pray that even in this service today, that we will make that determination that we are going to surrender our all to you. And so, dear God, we pray that your Holy Spirit will be with us in this act of worship, even as we seek to glorify your name and recall the life of our sister. And so, O oh God, we, we turn to you in the sorrow and the grief of our bereavement, praying that we may find the strength we need in your sustaining grace, so that even as we mourn the death of one whom we knew and loved, we may not be overcome by this trial, but we may hold fast, trusting in your goodness and mercy. Assure us this day, O oh God, that death is not the end of those who trust in you, and may our hearts be so composed by the Holy Spirit that our fear and bitterness may be swallowed up in the light and the peace you give to your troubled children. Almighty and eternal God, who by the Holy Spirit minister to us in our weakness, and by the victory of your Son, Jesus Christ, have given us the pledge of eternal life, lift us, we pray, above our present distress and sorrow, and shed the light of your grace and glory upon us through the same of Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen and amen. My sisters and brothers, we are met in this solemn moment to commend our sister Paulina Carr into the hands of the Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who sent his only Son, Today we are going to be recalling to our minds the life of our dear sister through the various tributes that will be offered and even as she is eulogized. And I pray that when the words of scriptures are read and the proclaimed word is given, that family members and friends will indeed find comfort in Almighty God. At this time, we will have the reading of the first lesson we read from Psalm 91 to 12 by Omar Carr.
Brooklyn, Montreal. Thou hast been our dwelling in all our generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or even thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting, everlasting thou art. Thou turnest man to destruction and to sadness, return he children of men. Thou are but as yesterday. night carry them away a flood they are as as sheep in the morning they are like grass that groweth up in the morning they flourish and groweth in the evening it is cut down and withered for we are consumed by thine anger and by thy wrath are we troubled thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spread our years as a tale as it is told. The day of our years are three scores, years and ten. And if by reasons of strength they are four scores, years, yet is thy strength labored sorrow for it is soon cut off and will fly away who knoweth the power of thine anger even according to thy fear so is thy wrath so teach us the days may apply arts wisdom here comes the scripture There is a representative for Dr. Daniel W. Cohen's. I come forward this time. This will be followed by a tribute from Lee, and then we will take two other tributes. All right, two other tributes that are not at this time. Come on and give God some praise. Come on and give God some praise. Bless the Lord. We thank God for being here on this blessed day as we celebrate and to send home our dear sister, Paulina Carr. My name is Elder Main. I'm representing, standing instead of Dr. Cowens, who was the pastor of the Bible with Church of God in Christ, where Sister Carr attended in Toronto, Canada. And he was not able to be here, but I'm here to give a little bit of what we know about our dear Sister Carr. Yeah. Man, she was a loving woman. Um, she dressed to the T. Yeah. Anybody know Sister Carr know that she dressed to the T. And if you don't know anything else, you know when she's walking, she's dressed good. Uh, Brother Carr is always there by our side. Bless the Lord. And we thank God for them. She was a loving woman, a woman that loved the Lord and was always there in our service. And you could hear her in the back when uh, Pastor Kamun was preaching the word. She would say, preach the word, sir. Preach the word. Bless the Lord. And a reflection of her, she was always won by Brother Carr's side always feeding you and if you know anything about the car family they will feed you to death and there anytime we have something at church she will always come bring in the soup 
I remember any time Sister Carl come to Jamaica, she always come back and bring me some fish. And uh, always bring me back something, a mango or something, she's bringing back to give to you. Amen? And I remember she saying before she passed, and when I was here for Brother Carr's uh, funeral, and she says, Elder Main, make sure that you go, back, go down at the house and go and call Brother Carr's brother. Can't remember his name. I, can't, I see his face. I remember, can't remember his name. But he always say, make sure you call him and go down there and get some sugar cane and get some breadfruit and, and get anything that you want. Just call him up. Amen? But she was a vital woman and a woman of the Lord who loved the Lord and served the Lord with all her heart. And it's a reflection of her just to make sure that we know the Lord, love the Lord with all our hearts. It is a time of mourning, mourning as, as we go through the different times in our life, different periods of our life. That you have to go through the mourning, you have to go through the sorrow, you have to go through the time where you're going to question God and ask him why. But remember that the man who said, let there be light, and there was light who controlled all things. There's going to be a time when it is your time when your name will be called. And you just have to make sure that your heart and your mind and your soul is right with God. So today we send forth our sister to the Lord. And we hope that you will send her away with joy and with happiness. And, and just know that God is with you. So from the Bible Way Church of God in Christ to the members, Mr. Bradley is here with me from Toronto, Canada. And from all the members and friends in Toronto, we were here with the family. And we're here with you. I know that God is real and real in your life. The Lord bless you. Good morning. Um, that's my grandmother over there. I'm the grandson of uh, Paulina Carr. Uh, today is a tough day for everybody and for myself included. Um, I will be speaking on behalf of her sister and her niece who couldn't be here today. Um, so I'll be reading some words from what they had to say. Dearest Auntie P, we greet you and we believe your spirit is here with us today as you transition from the physical world into the spiritual realm. This is your niece, Mars, addressing you on behalf of your eldest sister, May, and family. Sadly, we did not get to celebrate my 94th birthday together. You are a loving daughter, a sister, a devoted wife, a mother, and a very sincere friend. We could always count on you to give a helping hand in endless ways. You were supportive, a woman of strong will, stubborn, determined, very opinionated, but we could always expect you to tell us the truth as you saw it and as you knew it to be. Your daughter is always there every day, morning, noon, and night, and Amar was there every step of the way. Donna did an excellent job taking care of you, meeting with your doctors, your practitioners, trying to determine the best course of treatment and care. She is truly your daughter. Strong-willed, again stubborn, <laughs> resolute, and very caring with strong family values. And Omar was always there to support her and do his part. I was a witness to your daughter's strength, but she was also humble enough 
to ask for help when needed, although she was in the nursing field. Thelma was a godsend. She was a part of her journey. She was there from the beginning to the end. She was also there morning, noon, and night. So my dearest Auntie P, on behalf of Sister May and the family, from the depths of our hearts, we bid you a safe journey to the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen, please? Uh, I would like to say some words about my grandmother as well, if that's okay. Amen. I've basically known my grandmother my whole entire life. Um, when she first came up to Canada with my uncle Mar and uh, Philip, God rest his soul, uh, they came when it was snowing. It was cold. Um, I didn't know how long they were going to be here for, and I didn't know the journey that they were all going to take us on together of love, family, and, and culture. Growing up, all I knew was my grandmother being there, whether it was food on the table, for me to clean something, to cuss me occasionally because I did something wrong, to slide the head sometimes as well, too. But as critical as she could be, she was very loving. You could see the care in her eyes, even though she didn't, or she was stubborn sometimes. It doesn't matter what happened, whether it was a small little argument or you know a disagreement, she would still come for you to do what she needed to do for you. And that's because family was very important to her, the depths of her heart. I'm gonna miss my grandmother. One thing she did teach me was strength, and I'll try to carry on that strength for her for as long as I live. Amen. Hi everyone, um, I'm Thelma. Wow, <laughs> oh my goodness, sorry, my bad. The book. I'm going to be doing the eulogy on behalf of the family. Today, we have come together to say our final farewell to our beloved Paulina Carr, affectionately known to us as Bernice, Miss B, Mrs. Carr, Lady Carr, and Sister Carr to her church family at Bible Way Church of God in Christ in Toronto, Canada. Paulina was born in Old Harbor, St. Catharines, Jamaica on September 2nd, 1949 and departed this world on December 26, 2023, in Toronto, Canada. She was the wife of Philip Carr, who preceded her in death. She was the beloved mother of Sophia, known to some as Donna, Derek, son-in-law, Michael deceased, Omar here with us today. She was the grandmother to Tyrell, Ia, Delisa, Joshua, and Avery. 
much loved sister of Mavis and Faye. Nieces and nephews too numerous to mention at this time. She was a long-standing and very close friend of the Davis family. They were also co-members of Work and School Support Association. Lena Bernice was a loving and kind-hearted person to everyone. She was also very giving. She would do all she can to help. She loved to cook and take pride, joy, and love in, prepar uh, in preparing meals that was enjoyed by those who ate her food. I know there are those at Bible Way who will miss her soup. Paulina never missed an Old Harbor Area Association dinner gala. She, was her f she and her family were regulars at the OHAA functions and contributed sin significantly to the fundraising efforts that fostered the welfare of the needy as well as aspiring youths. Paulina was also, also believed in right and wrong. She wasn't afraid to let you know, no matter who you were, family, friend or foe, she spoke her mind about what she believed in and stood by it, whether you agree or not. She didn't hold grudges. Once you sort it out with her, she will give that beautiful smile of hers. Please keep the family in your prayers. The family wish to thank each and every one of you for sharing in this time. We know that Paulina Bernice has gone on to her rest and meet with her savior and her beloved husband, Philip. We will miss her, but say, rest well. We love you. At this time, I would also like to give my personal thought while I'm here. <sighs> For me, she was Sister Carr or Lady Carr. I never attempt to call Paulina until she was sick. <laughs> then, then I know her mouth wasn't so strong. <laughs> we met, oh gosh, 12 over 20 odd years. Yeah. And we became very close because I used to pick up Tyrell, Aliyah, and Jalisa for church, Sunday school whatever was going on that involved the youths, I would go and get them. Sometimes when they didn't want to go, she would say to me, come anyway, <laughs> they go in. And she didn't stand for no nonsense. She didn't let them say, oh, I don't want to go, or make fuss or whatever. Said, you got to go. When she said you're going, you're going. Even with me in the, when she was sick, and I was at the hospital with her sometimes, and I want to try and encourage her to do certain things, and she just look at you. The look she would give me, my mind would say, okay, it's all right, you don't have to. But one thing about her, she loved her music. She loved her gospel music. And if you want to get her down calm, she will, you just have to play her music. One of my favorite memories with her, why I say she don't hold grudges. I remember what, there was a time that I went to say hi to her and she wouldn't even look at me. 
And the look she gave me would have cut me down if I was a scaredy person. But she looked at me and so I went up to her and I said, what did I do? I didn't do anything. She said, you don't remember? I said, no. She said, you walk in church and you pass me and go and you didn't even say hello. <laughs> I said, but I didn't see you. She said, why you mean you didn't see me? Big me and you don't see me. So I said, I'm so sorry, please forgive me. And I hugged her and she hugged me back. And she always, like Elder Main said, when she come back from Jamaica, I could expect to get my fish and bami or whatever else she bring back. She was the most beautiful person that I've known. Sometimes you see people and they may look away, but she didn't, she was inside and out beautiful. I love her. I'm going to miss her. Keep us in your prayers. God bless you all. Let me thank all those persons who offered. Okay, so we'll take one more tribute, Brother Raffington, before we move on. Immediately after this tribute, we will receive an offering in aid of the church's building fund. Morning, brothers and sisters. It is a wonderful day, isn't it? It's a beautiful day. Of course. Not because we are putting away one of our loved ones. It is a beautiful day. And I want you to behave like the day is beautiful. I have known Sister Carr since I started coming to this church. She's always here on a church day. And she was a member also of the choir. Long standing member until she leave this country. We missed her a great deal. We are sorry now for her death. It wasn't very long since her husband has left us and now she is gone. So we give God thanks for today that we are putting her away. We have a bright, beautiful, sunny day. And you are all beautiful here. Thank God for you. I'm going to try and sing you a little song. I'm asking you not to disgrace me if I don't do very well. Mm. Only a look at Jesus. Oh, so bow down with care. He has promised to help you. He'll always your burden share. Only a look, only a look can turn you away from sin. Oh, a look will bring. 
bring you salvation, eternal life to win. Only a look at Jesus, he'll be your constant friend. He will bring you peace and comfort. He'll be with you to the end. Only a look, only a look will Crow, oh, a look will bring you peace and comfort, and will take you to the God bless you. May, may the dead rest in peace. Thank you very much. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Only a look. You know, it is not oftentimes you hear that someone actually belongs to two churches. <laughs> but um, for those of you who traveled from Canada, Sister Paulina would have been a part of your church. But whenever she returned to Jamaica, she was part of our church as well. And it really speaks about the kind of person who she was, always ensuring that wherever she was, she was in the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord. A wonderful testimony, indeed, of someone who was committed to Almighty God. At this time, we will receive an offering in aid of the church's building fund. And we will sing, When the Roll is Called Up Yonder. And of course, um, you know, oftentimes we go to funerals and we sing some wonderful songs. But, you know, these songs that we often sing, they are in themselves uh, messages to us. And so even as we sing, each of us really need to ask ourselves a question. If when that role is called up yonder, whether or not our names will be there. When the role is called up yonder. <laughs> Oh, when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. Oh, when the saved over shall gather over on the other shore when the roll is called up yonder I'll be there. Let us all stand. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there on that Friday. 
everything. Oh, when the road is caught up yonder, when the road is caught up yonder, when the road is caught up yonder. So please stand. Let us labor for the master. Oh, let us labor for the master. We will continue with the reading from the Old Testament, and then we will be favored with a selection from the St. Joseph Methodist Church Choir. Charisse?
Good morning, everyone. The reading is taken from Isaiah 40, verse 21, 23, and 28 to 31. Have ye not known? Have ye not heard? Hath it not been told to you from the beginning? Have ye not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretcheth out of the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. That bringeth the princes to nothing. He maketh the judges of the earth as vanity. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is he weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and young men, young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. I just wanted to say a quick word um, to my cousins and family. I'm the granddaughter of Auntie P's sister, so Sister May. Um, every time I saw Auntie P, she was smiling. And when I think of when they say a life well lived is a legacy of love, she was a woman when I think of Proverbs 31. We all know that she was somebody who, she was just so humble and always happy. So, cuz, to all of the family and friends here, I just want to say, may we, I know I will personally continue to carry her lessons in my heart because for me, as though we may miss her and we have to cherish our memories, I know that there's a special place for her beside the seat of the Father. Amen.
stand for the gospel reading. It comes to us from St. John chapter 11, reading from verse 32 through to 45. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone and Jesus looked upwards and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. This is the gospel of Christ. Please be seated. Lord God, we thank you for your, the presence of your Holy Spirit with us in this service of thanksgiving. We have not come here to grieve, O oh God, but we have come here to give you thanks and to praise your holy name. Because, Father, we know that even in the midst of sorrow, O oh God, we can still be joyful, especially when we know, O oh God, that the one who is being laid to rest would have lived for you. And so we pray, O oh God, that you will continue to speak to us as you would have been speaking. And I ask, O oh God, that you will help us not to turn away from you, void. And so may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts together, may they be found acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord. You are our strength and our redeemer. Amen and amen. John 11, 32 to 35. Today I'll be looking at verses 43 through to 44. I am the resurrection and the life. A pastor having preached a rousing sermon that had revved up his congregation, said with much enthusiasm, let me see the hands of all those who want to go to heaven. And almost everybody raised their hand except this elderly gentleman. The pastor could not understand why this man 
had not raised his hands. After all, everybody should want to go to heaven. And so he questioned the elderly gentleman. And he simply said, you know, pastor, the way you ask that question, let me, let, the way you ask the question, let me see the hands of those who want to go to heaven. You sound as if you were rounded up a busload to go tonight. And I was not ready. <laughs> so I did not put up my hand. If you were given a chance to live forever or to die, I wonder which one you would choose. There are some persons who would perhaps say, yes, I want to live forever. While there are others who may say, this world is so full of problems, full of challenges, that I would not want to live in this current world forever. There is a song, um, it was written years ago, and I'm sure some of us may know it, Forever Young. I want to be forever young. Anybody knows it? You do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Now, the thing is, I, whereas I understand the, the sentiments of that song, Forever Young, I want to be forever young, the truth is the only place we will remain young or never die, never grow old is in heaven. And we just sung that song along with the choir, Never grow old. And so our desire to remain forever young, it is really wishful thinking. From the time we came into this world, my sisters and brothers, we have been on a journey towards the end. We have been on a journey towards death. And there are some persons who die very young, there are others who live very long lives. Just yesterday, my, my family and I, we visited two sisters. And uh, one of the sisters, um, she is 99 years old. And of course, she is very strong, perhaps stronger than I am. I was surprised that she was able to walk up all those stairs in her home quite briskly. <laughs> you know, 99 years old. And then her sister is 105 years old. And her face looked as if she was just someone who was perhaps in her late 60s. Very young indeed, very collective. And you know, I said to the, the one with 105, I said, you know, you are alive for a particular purpose. God has kept you for a particular purpose. But the truth, my sisters and brothers, is that whether we, we live to be 120 or 30, whatever that age may be, the, the, the hard facts that we all have to face is that one day we will depart this earth. One day we will leave this earth. So whether or not we want to live here forever, yes or no, the, the, the truth is that we can't stay on this earth forever. Death is inevitable and we know that. As human beings, we are on a journey. We came into this world as small human beings and we, we continue to grow. But every single step that we take is actually a step closer to the time when we shall depart the earth. We live and then we die. That's the reality. When we die, all that we would have worked for or accomplished is left behind for those who have come behind us, and this cycle is repeated over and over. So yes, death is inevitable. It is the one thing that we can actually be sure of will happen to us. Someone once said that the only two things that we are really sure of in this life, 
one is taxes, and one is death. So we can actually be sure of those two things. Yet, even though we know this, the truth is that when our loved ones die, we still feel a sense of loss because a mother, a father, a sister, a brother, or whatever the relation will be or is, that person will be absent from our earthly lives. Whereas there are those who accept the natural course of life, there are many persons who question God when loved ones are taken away from us, especially in tragic instances. And so what we know is that death challenges us and it is natural to feel that God could have done something to prolong our loved one's life. In the midst of the death of our loved ones and the various challenges we may face in life, there are certain assurances that we can have. Firstly, the assurance of God's presence. In the text from John 11, we read about the death of Lazarus. Now, Lazarus was a friend to Jesus and a brother to Martha and Mary. And when he got sick, his sisters sent word for Jesus to come quickly because they knew that if Jesus was on spot, Jesus could prevent him from dying. Jesus could heal their brother their, and his friend. However, Jesus did not immediately leave where he was, but he remained two days longer. And by the time he arrived, Lazarus had already been in the tomb Four days. Mary, the sister of Lazarus, went out and she met Jesus. And in great despondency, she said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. It's an awful thing to have to have endless regrets about the way a loved one has died. Have you ever been caught in that very dark place? where you, you keep thinking over and over what might have been if only circumstances were different. If only the doctor had gotten here earlier. If only I hadn't left her alone while I stepped out of the house. If only she hadn't gone out so late at night. If only, if only. When we look at all that is happening around us, my dear friends, death and destruction, all the death and the destruction, we too may echo the words of Mary. Lord, if you had been here, my brother or my loved one would not have died. At times we, like Mary, may think or believe that if Jesus was present, then certain things would not have happened to us in our lives or in the lives of others. But in spite of all we may think, in spite of all we may feel, we can be assured, my dear friends, of our Lord's presence with us along life's journey. You may not feel as if he's there, you may not see him, but it does not mean he isn't. We can be assured of his presence with us even as we continue on this journey of life. Jesus made the promise to his disciples in Matthew 28, verse 20, and he said the following words, And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And the psalmist David in Psalm 23 says, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. And so God is with us, even if we feel it or not. Mary was distraught, and so she wept. She believed with all her heart that if Jesus was present, he could have helped her brother. But little did she know, little did she know that in the midst of her sorrow, 
Jesus was getting ready to work wonders in their lives. Isn't that so good? That even today, my sisters and brothers, in our grief and sorrow, Jesus is getting ready to do, to do new and wonderful things in your lives as well. The text also assures us that Jesus cares. When Jesus saw Mary weeping at the Jews who came with her, the scripture says that Jesus wept. Can you imagine our Lord and Savior showing up and he wept? Their grief and also Jesus' love for his friend moved Jesus to tears. And this verse shows us that Jesus was indeed a very compassionate and tender-hearted person. These tears were not a sign that he was weak. You know, we live in a society where persons think that if men cry, it's a sign of weakness. Nothing going to go at all, right? That's not true. Tears are not a sign of weakness. Jesus' tears were not a sign of weakness, but from one whose heart was broken. Jesus had a great love for Lazarus and his two sisters. John 11 verse 5 says that Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. And this love was not a romantic love, but a love used here to denote friendship. This love that Jesus had for this family is the same love that he has for all of us as well. The text teaches us a lesson on compassion. Though Jesus was the son of God and knew he was going to raise Lazarus from the dead, he still manifested compassion for this family. And so the, the, the song, Does Jesus Cares, you know, the, the, it is answered in this passage with a resounding yes. When the Jews saw Jesus weeping, they exclaimed, see how he loved him. Today, in addition to facing the death of someone you knew and loved, persons here, you may be here today and you may be shedding silent tears because of the various situations that you are currently faced with. Maybe it's illness, economic problems, relationship problems, and many more. And you may have cried openly, or you may be weeping in your heart. And you, like the disciples, when, when they were caught in the storm and Jesus was asleep, they asked the question, Lord, carest thou not that we perish? Does Jesus care about what you're going through? The verse of the song, Does Jesus Care, says, Does Jesus care when my heart is pained too much for mirth and song, when the burdens press and the cares distress and the way grows weary and long? And the chorus says, Oh, yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. When the days are weary and the long night dreary, I know, I know that my Savior cares. Does Jesus care when my way is dark with a nameless dread and fear? And as the daylight fades into deep dark shades, does he care enough to be near? And the chorus comes in again and answers these questions. Oh, yes. He cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. When the days are weary and the long night dreary, I know that my Savior cares. And so, my sisters and brothers, I assure us today that none of the tears that we cry ever go unnoticed. Jesus cares about every details of our lives. Jesus said in Luke 12 verse 7 that even the very hairs on our heads are numbered. And so yes, Jesus cares. He cares. 
in the midst of our sufferings and, and our pain, Jesus stands by us and he weeps alongside us because he cares. Isn't that a wonderful thing? That the Savior of this world cares about you and I. So even when you may feel like others around you do not care, you can have that assurance that if there's one single person who care about you, that is Jesus Christ. And isn't that the most important person anyway? He cares. And so in the midst of your tears, in the midst of what you yourselves may be going through today, have that assurance that Jesus cares. The assurance that Jesus cares should therefore move us to cast all our cares upon him, for he cares for us. 1 Peter 5, 7 says that we are to cast all our fears. Another version of the Bible says we are to cast all our anxiety on him because he cares for you. Jesus cares for all of us, my sisters and brothers. He cared enough to leave the splendor of heaven and come into this world to be crucified, not for his sins, but for ours. He cares about us. The Lord who cares for us, um, he invites us to come to him with our cares and our burdens. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Indeed, Jesus cares about us. But the text also assures us that because Jesus cares, Jesus acts. Because he cares, Jesus acts. Jesus went to Lazarus' tomb and told them, to move away, roll away the stone, take away the stone. And, you know, the, the modern equivalent would be to tell the, the family members of the, the, the deceased to dig up the grave, get a shovel and dig up the grave. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been here, he has been dead for four days. So not only would the body have started to decompose after four days, there would be that terrible smell. And this, of course, would only further distraught, add distraught to the family, you know, and those around. But Jesus knew what he was doing. When Jesus tells us to do something, let us just do it. If the Lord tells you to do something, just do it, because he knows what he is doing. Many lives are reflective today of this stench. The vicious crimes and other acts of violence around us have created a stench in our land. The blood of many who have been slaughtered here in this country are crying up from the ground. Wrongful behaviors and attitudes create a stench that may cause persons not to want to come near or associate with us. All these are deterrents to us establishing and maintaining right relationships with God and each other. But guess what? The one who is the resurrection and the life stands ready, my dear friends, to act in our lives. And he's not afraid of our stench. He's not afraid of it at all. The stone had to be removed in the scriptures before Lazarus could come forth from the tomb which held him captive. Jesus then cried out with a loud voice, we are told, Lazarus, come out! The voice of Jesus woke Lazarus, Lazarus from his sleep in death. And today the voice of Jesus is calling out to us as well, in the midst of our despair, praise the Lord. He's calling you and I, my dear sisters and brothers, to move from that place of grief, to move from that place of bondage, and to come forth. Move from that place of darkness. Move away from the depression. Move away from the feelings of failure. And to walk into the light that Jesus Christ brings to us. Jesus is calling us to break away 
from the things that are binding us and accept the gift of new life that he offers to us all. Lazarus, he was given another opportunity to live again. And when he came out of the tomb, he was still bound with the strips of cloth. And so Jesus had to say, unbind him and let him go. And so today, you, even as you're sitting here in this service of thanksgiving, you have come to support the, the, the family members. Today, you yourselves, you may be bound by your own problems, challenges, etc. But Jesus is offering you another chance to live again. He's calling you to come out of that and come into this. Jesus' actions caused a reaction from those around. Verse 45 says, Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus had done, believed in him. Because of the acts of Jesus, many who were present believed in him. And so how about you who are present here today? Have the actions of Jesus in your life and in the lives of others impacted you in any way? How have you responded to the miracles that have occurred in your lives? How have you responded to the blessings that God has bestowed upon you? And don't tell me, Pastor, I don't have anything to give God thanks for. You know, you have some people like that. No matter how much God does for them, they still never have enough, right? Ungrateful. You know, I always say that, thank God that he's not like me at all, right? Because I don't know what I would have done, you know? But the whole thing is, God is not like us, and we can be some of the most ungrateful persons. Isn't that so? The more God gives to us, is the more we want. And oftentimes, we don't stop to, to just smell the roses along the way. Sometimes, we don't stop to, to really thank God even for the small things. Because you see, God is always doing something in our lives. They may seem small and insignificant to us, but they are not small and insignificant in God's eyes. So how have you responded to the blessings that God has bestowed upon you? How have you responded to God's love, God's care? Um, there will be a judgment day. And all of us, we will have to stand before Almighty God. And we will have to give God an account of our lives. You know, um, Sister Carr has passed on. And the things she did, um, persons are able to speak about these things. We are left here, and we are still writing the chapters of our lives. We are not even sure if it is the last chapter in our book. Mark you, it could be our last chapter. But we are still writing our chapters. And so the, the thing is, when the Lord comes, will he find us um, committed? Will he find you committed? Will he, will he find you faithful? Will you be able to say, yes, Lord, I gave my life to you. Don't end up being a fool by rejecting the offer of salvation. There is an old story, as I close, there is an old story of a king and his clown or jester who sometimes said very foolish things. One day, the, the jester had said something so foolish that the king, handing him a staff, said to him, Take this and keep it till you find a bigger fool than yourself. Some years later, the king lay on his deathbed, and his courtiers were called. His family and his servants also stood around his bedside. The king, addressing them, said, I am about to leave you. I am going on a very long journey and shall not return again to this place. So I have called you to say goodbye. Then his jester stepped forward and addressing the king said, Your Majesty, may I ask a question? When you have journeyed abroad, visiting your people or paying diplomatic visits to other courts, your heralds and your servants, they have always gone before you making preparations for you. May I ask what preparations your Majesty has made for this long journey that he is about to take. 
Alas, replied the king, I have made no preparations. Then said the, 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 the jester, take this staff with you, for now I have found a bigger fool than myself. My sisters and my brothers, God offers his presence. He cares. He acts in our lives for our good. And God is holding up God's end of the bargain. And so I implore us, make sure that you keep your end by making preparations for the next leg of your journey. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen and amen. And so, dear God, we thank you for your word to us today. We thank you, dear Lord, that indeed as people we have that hope that when we, we die, it is not the end, but it is really just the beginning of a new life. We pray, dear God, that even as we continue along life's journey, that you will help us, O oh God, to make the necessary preparations to live, to live in that land where we will never grow old. Father, into your hands we place ourselves this day. Continue to speak your words into our hearts, O oh Lord. This I pray, and through the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, amen and amen. I now invite Pastor Otis Malcolm to offer words of prayer for the family. Good afternoon. Could I invite the supporters just to stand? I'm going to ask the Berea family to remain seated, please. Let us pray. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, we give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor. We're grateful, Heavenly Father, for your son, Jesus Christ, whom you have sent over 2,000 years ago to bring redemption to this world. And we're particularly grateful today, God, that you, through your mercies and your love, can even be with us here this afternoon as we celebrate the life of this, your daughter. God, I was charged with the responsibility of committing into your hands the bereaved family. God, it is never easy to have lost a loved one. Father, we know the pain, the agony, that there is an empty space, an empty void on the inside. God, that cannot be filled with no one else and nothing else. But I am grateful, God, that through your divine Holy Spirit, that God, you can fill that space. You can bridge that gap. And that God, you can administer comfort in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father God, that you will surround them with your love. I pray that even in the still watches of the night, God, when their minds begin to run, and they begin reminiscing on their loved one and friend. I pray, God, that you will be their source of protection, their source of comfort in the name of Jesus. Surround them even now with your band of peace. And I pray, God, that in this season they will come to acknowledge and understand that you giveth and that you taketh away. Father God, I declare in this atmosphere that you will be everything that they so desire in this time. God, help them to understand that even now they need to be drawn closer together. As God, together they stand, but divided they fall. Bless them now in their going out. Bless them in their coming in. And I pray, God, that the little that remain, that God, they will be strengthened. And God Almighty, I pray even for those who are here to support, who, Father, who are actually mourning with them, that they too will experience you as the God of peace, the God that comforts the God that delivers and set free. Father, by the power of the divine Holy Spirit, let your divine will be done on earth, even now, as it is in heaven. In Christ's name, amen. Thank you, Pastor Malcolm. I invite us to all please stand for the Apostles' Creed.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last sin. Amen. You may be seated, and I ask that you join in with the prayer of thanksgiving, where it is indicated in bold. Praise be to you, O God, our Father. Praise and thanksgiving to you, O Christ, our Lord and our God. Praise and blessing be to you, O Holy Spirit, God, our Comforter. Together, all praise and glory, blessing and honor, thanksgiving and worship be to you, O blessed Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. We bless your name for Paulina, whom we today lay to rest. We give you thanks for the joy and the blessing her life has brought to others, for her service to her generation according to your will and for every happy remembrance of her life. We bless you for your mercy and goodness which have followed her all the days of her life, that now the trials of this world are over and death itself is past. Receive her into your perfect kingdom and bring us with all who have lived and died and served you faithfully to the fullness of your eternal joy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Okay, this song that is indicated there is not the actual ones with the words. And so I'm sure that those of us know that song, The Goodness of God. And so I invite us to please stand as we sing it. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me all your life. All my days have been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. I'm going to sing of the goodness of God. Let us all please stand. It's not known. All my life has been.
goodness is running after. behoves all of us to live that life that is pleasing to Almighty God. You know, um, Jesus continues, the Spirit continues to beckon to us. And I, I pray that indeed when our time comes, it will not be a case where somebody will have to say to us that we are fools because we never accepted Christ. May we continue to sing of the goodness of God, the Lord's prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. and ever. Amen. Please remain standing. Eternal God who have made us all and hate nothing that you have made and have given your son for our redemption, we commend our sister Paulina Carr to your perfect mercy and wisdom. Eternal rest grant unto her and let perpetual light shine upon her. We will end of this service of thanksgiving as we sing the old rugged cross on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross the Dear and best for a world. 
Receive the benediction. Now the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always, now and forevermore. Amen and amen. We will proceed to the graveside for the service of committal. The cemetery is to my left, your right. Please remain standing so that the body and uh, members of the family, along with myself, can leave the church.
It is well with my soul, with my soul, it is well, it is well. Just yeah, man, Mr. Same time back. You all right? Yeah, man, all right, sir. Shove it, shove it, shove it. Shove it, shove it, shove it. 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 Shove So the Lord pities those who fear him, for he knows our frame, he remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass, as the flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. 
But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children. We know that neither death nor life, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We know that if this earthly tabernacle be dissolved, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. Since our sister Paulina has departed out of this life, and God in his mercy has taken her to himself, we therefore commit her body to the ground, dust to dust, ashes to ashes, earth to earth, in sure and certain hope of eternal life. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, from henceforth, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, even so for they rest from their labors. Let us pray. O merciful God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercies and God of all comfort, raise us up, we pray, from death of sin to the new life of righteousness, that when we shall depart from this life, we shall be found acceptable in your sight. Grant to the bereaved consolation and faith in this time of distress and trial, the blessed hope in the coming of your kingdom, the sustaining grace in the fellowship of your people, and steadfastness in the service of your name and the doing of your will. Support us, O oh Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite us to sing. Hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Yes. Don't move, don't move. Don't move. Don't move. Don't move. Don't move.
complicado que hacen para, para esto.